Hey guys, welcome to episode 182, I believe, of the Cat Lady channel video. My name is Andrea, also known as Cat Lady. That's two T's. Oh, you can still see my sign in the... I can't point, I can't point at things in videos. Right there! Cat Lady, two T's, C-A-T-T, -T, which stands for Craft All the Things. I am coming to you from Michigan. It is a very sunny looking day, but it's deceivingly sunny because it's really cold. As you can see, I still have my hand knits on when I took David to the bus this morning. It's already almost 10 o'clock this morning. It's Wednesday. I am super behind in like recording this week because there's just not been a lot going on. And this week, these last two weeks have just flown. I don't know what it is about last week and this week, but I just, it's like, it's already Wednesday told myself oh I should record on Monday I never record Mondays but sometimes I'm like I don't really have anything to share and then it was like yesterday I was like oh I should record something and then it's like oh, I don't really have anything to share and then all of a sudden it's Wednesday the week's half over and I still don't have a lot to share but here we are anyways I am a crafting channel that focuses a lot on knitting uh, crochet spinning and all sorts of other crafty things. I also have been spending a lot of time on my circular sock machine. I have a Erlbacher Speedster, uh, currently using a 60 needle cylinder as my primary choice of cylinder, just because I don't know how to change the cylinder. I have a 72 and I just haven't played with it. And I'm new to the whole thing. It's, I've had it for a year, but I haven't used it regularly. So I'm trying to get more comfortable with it again. Uh, so you'll probably see a lot of cranked socks in in future episodes. Hopefully, that's the plan. Uh, I have two kids, a husband and a cat, and the kids are both at school and husband's at work, and I'm here trying to get things done. And I need to go run errands and yada yada yada. Boring, boring life stuff. Uh, if you follow me through Vlogtober, you're aware <laughs> of how boring my life can be. Mm. Uh, but anyways, that's not what we're here about today. We are here to talk crafting. So the first thing that I worked on this week is I worked on my hexagon cardigan. So this is my Passionate Kelsey YouTube tutorial. I made one for myself and then a friend was like, oh, can you make one for me? I said, sure. And then I just kind of like we talked about price. We kind of talked about pricing, but never really talked about it. And then I kind of just um, didn't say anything. She didn't say anything. So finally, like a week ago, I'm like, "Do you still want this?" And she's like, "Yes." And I'm like, "Okay." And we figured out a price. But here's mine that's finished. So this is what the finished object looks like. And she wanted the same colors. So that is mine. And then hers is very close to being finished. So this is hers. I feel like. I, try, I match the rows and stuff, but I feel like this one's a little smaller. She's a little shorter than me, so I feel like should be fine. Uh, I may add an extra couple rows to the edging, because I think I did like three rows, one, two, three, three or four rows. Maybe I did four, I can't tell, of edging, so maybe I'll do like four or five on this one. Uh, but it's the same yarn, it's Bernat Pop. Kitchen Kitsch is the colorway. The one thing I did do differently, which I, I really shouldn't have made that much of a difference, is I made the back seam a little smaller because I feel like it's too big on mine, so that I like it, it like puckers in the back, so I, I decreased the back, so I think that's what's doing it. I'm going to give it a nice steam, which will relax it a little bit too, because I have washed mine. Um, but I like the way the color patterned better in hers, actually. Uh, I'm going to do a blue edging because I like how the I have the blue edging on the sleeves I will do the blue edging around the collar basically basically it's all around the collar there in the bottom so I will do the blue edging there to give that extra pop of blue on that side but uh, and I have a bazillion ends to weave in which is like my least favorite part but I got like so many ends so many ends so, so I need to work on that maybe I need to at least work on some of that today. I, I, I've been like, I need to find the hook, the right hook for the edging. So, cause I don't think I, don't think it's in here. Do there any other hooks in here? I don't even know where my, I don't even know where my, okay, there's the real, there's the main hook. I, yeah, I don't know where the hook is that I used. And I think I want to use 
a slightly larger hook than I used on mine as well because I feel like it was, it was too, too small for the yarn. So that's that. And other things that I've been making, this is the only other thing I've been doing. I've been working on my sock machine, just trying to like, every time I've made a sock, almost, I've like messed up on the heel. So like I've dropped a stitch and I've been able to fix it, which is good because it's important to know how to fix your mistakes as you want. I've been able to make it work. I don't necessarily think I'm fixing it properly, but I'm like grabbing a stitch somewhere and putting it back on the machine. <laughs> So it may not be the right one and it, it's usually on the heel so it's not really noticeable so uh, I just did four heels in a row and I did I did some slight variations so then this one's got a hole well actually the hole's not that bad they, all the heels have like that one doesn't have any holes on the side Ooh, oh okay I dropped a stitch there <laughs> so uh, but this one let's see and I don't even remember okay so I made a deeper heel here so which means the deal, the heel goes longer because I want to try to make a, a sock for my husband with a deeper heel to see if that fits his foot better. So I did that. And so that makes a nice like, almost looks too big, but we'll see. Uh, I made the standard heel there or no. No, this was, okay. So usually I make a heel that looks like this. That's a, it's kind of round. If you see, it's kind of, mm, kind of round. This one was a normal, not rounded style. And you can see it kind of, I don't feel like it's that much of a difference though. So like, I mean, cause I feel like I screw up a lot on the spot that's rounded. Cause the machine has a bunch of needles that pop up and go in a circle if you haven't seen it before. And at one point to make this rounded heel, you pull up two needles. It's not the, and it's not the, decreasing part that's the problem so you pull up the two needles and you knit around pull up the other two on the other side knit around so you're doing the same thing on both sides then you put down two needles and then knit around that's every almost every time I do that on the one side so when I'm looking at the machine on the left side every time I come back around it wants to like drop the stitch and I got to be really careful about where my weights are that are pulling it down on the yarn and where the yarn is going to make sure it catches and then sometimes and sometimes even when it looks like it's going to catch it doesn't so then it drops and then it's a whole mess that's for the rounded tail so when i do one stitch at a time it doesn't seem to be i don't seem to have that problem so maybe i just do the regular maybe i just do the regular one because i mean is it really that much of a is it going to feel that different i don't know so maybe my next pair of socks for me and i don't knit rounded heels and toes either. I do the one, 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 uh, one increase or one decrease, one decrease, one increase, one increase, you know, for a short row heel. So I think I, it's a lot of trial and error. And right now I'm leaving and maybe, I don't know, maybe I leave a lot, a little bit wider. For me, my feet are narrow, so I don't think I need to. I leave 10 active stitches, which is again, the same as one. So when I hand knit socks, I knit 60 stitches. My cylinder is 60 stitches. However, the gauge that I get is much tighter than the gauge in this machine. So it's based on, but it's based on rows more than it is on the width. So, you know, you have some stretch because it's knit. As you stretch it, it gets narrower. So essentially you, you take your row gauge and factor how many rows because if I knit so many rows and then pull it up on my foot and as long as you have the appropriate heel that's kind of cupping your heel it should stay I think is the logic behind that so I don't know all my hand knit socks are all different sizes all different feelings some of them are too tight some of them are too loose so like I just can't get a sock right no matter if I knit it or machine it so but I do like my first pair that I machined last week so I wore them out and I like them but I'm gonna rip this out because this is just waste yarn and I, again, I was just practicing my little heel experiment. So that's why I wanna show you before I ripped it out. Uh, I have the yarn wound for my next pair of socks and it's going, I'm using Felici because I have like a ton of it. I mean, like, I'm not kidding. I have way too much because I bought it. I bought, I had a bunch because I liked it. And then I got the machine and I'm like, oh my God, I'm gonna buy so much more and I did. <laughs> I like bought a, a sampler pack of like all their colors of that season, two of them because they're 50 grams. So I literally have, let's say 
one, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, 10, 15, like 30, 25 to 30, 100 grams sets of Felici, at least. I'll have to count, I'll count at some point, or maybe I'll walk over there and show you my Felici section. Um, but anyways, this is called, what did I do? Double Dog Dare. Uh, so I have my cones, and I like matching socks, so I made sure my ends match up. So it's almost a full stripe of this beigey color, and then it goes into the yellow. And they're both, the, they both should be the same. If I'm off, and I, oh, and yes, because, and since I don't like it when stripes do weird things on the front, I don't care about the back, like with the heel and stuff, I really don't care. Obvi and at the toe. I don't, uh, which I can't always avoid if there's like, uh, if I pay attention, I can avoid. Uh, so th I wound this, which is um, my yarn, Cat Lady Yarns. <sighs> raspberry sorbet? No. Raspberry? Wild raspberry. Sweet raspberry. Raspberry something. Raspberry something. Raspberry. <laughs> Might be wild raspberry. Anyways, that is gonna be the heel, which I think will be nice. It like it really actually matches this, matches this pink pretty close. So nice contrast matching heel and toe, which is tricky on the machine, but I did it for Jim's socks and so much better, so much better than my socks with the weird stripes that like pop in weird places. So. So that is the plan. Uh, it is Wednesday. I got to take David to the piano. I have one random virtual conference for Emily because he wasn't available the day of in-person conferences. So I have that. Emily's got robotics, so Jim's taking her to that. And then tomorrow's a half day. Then I have David's conferences tomorrow. And we have a meeting to go to for Battle of the Books. And then Sav this weekend is Emily's robotics. And like, there's just, it's just nonstop. So... I'm hoping to start my socks, so maybe I'll work on a sock today. Uh, I want to work on my cardigan, so those are my two things that you'll see this week because I really don't have anything else. Go well, I do have things to work on, but those are the two things I'm going to focus on. Um, I have to make a recording of a piano piece that I didn't get to play at my lesson that I said she wanted to show me something else, so I said I'll just record it and send it to you. So if I get that recorded, I technically already have it recorded, but I'm going to do it again because I want to see if I can do it a little better. So I will put in a recording of that at the end of the video, show you uh, my piano progress. It's all pretty much the same, but it's fun. I'm enjoying it a lot. So that's all I have for today. Uh, I will pop back in later this week, probably either tomorrow, well, tomorrow or Friday, depending on what I get done today, and show you what's going on. Good afternoon. It is. Thursday this week I tell you this week has gone by so fast it's Thursday some nice sun sunlight shining on my face it looks kind of nice I'm trying to avoid some glare in my glasses but get that no matter where I am anyways I am here with a update I am always cold in my house and I know I talked about this during October I just the temperature consistency throughout the rooms is all over the place by a number of degrees like per room so it's like I can never I'm never at the warm temperature that our house is set at 75 and it's like never 75 except for when you're in the kitchen so so when I'm not in the kitchen I'm cold so anyways uh, oh it is over there so the first thing I didn't show you that I made last week that was part of like playing with my sock machine is I made a little uh, yarn cozy and this was done with a mock rib technique. So on the machine, you have all these like needles. I don't, I don't have, well, I'm just gonna, I'll take one out for you. So you have these little needles that latches basically. And there's, in this one, there's 62 of them. And, or 62, 60 of them. And now I can't get that in. Um, so what you do is you take out every other one. And so then you get the little bar in between so you have this knit stitch and then the bar which is like your pearl stitch so it's kind of mock rib so but it's really just a drop stitch <laughs> um but it gives the fabric some stretch because this is the 60. now if i did this on a if i did this on a 72 would i get maybe i sh potentially should get more stretch but i guess it all depends on tension if i loosen the tension of course that could make it more stretch but i don't know this seemed perfect for a 100 gram skein of fingering weight so now like 
if it was uh, a bigger skein, like bulky or DK, that might be a little more poofier, then it may not fit as well. And I mean, I had to kind of like manhandle it in there a little bit. <laughs> so, but I think it looks cute. Now, once I get the river going, I can actually make like a true ribbed tube that would fit better. But at the bottom, I just cinched it up at the bottom. I think it looks kind of cool though. And I like, I kind of like that you can see not only the yarn pattern, but then the yarn you're covering in there as well. And this will definitely keep the, keep my yarn intact from falling all over the place, I think, ideally. So I will probably make more of these because I don't have a lot of like sock cozies and they work really well. So I was pretty happy with that. So that's that. And I finished finish the hexagon cardigan. So I already sent her a message saying it's done. I really like the way the colors came out. Like, uh, I just like, I, I like it a little better than mine. Just the way the colors came out. I like the white in the back because mine was all the, be the beige color, which is like my least favorite color out of the skein. Uh, I like the way, I like the sleeves. I like the little edging there as well. And then, yeah, I like how the blue edging turned out here. I like it. I gave it a little steam to kind of loosen it up and ensure that uh, it fits so it does match the size that mine does because I just kind of made it to match mine because I didn't really get a size from her or anything uh, but I think it's gonna be okay so I haven't heard I haven't checked my messages to see if I heard back but I'm excited to have that done because it's kind of like test knitting like it's just it's on the back of your mind and you just want to get it over with and I'm glad I'm, I'm glad it's done so so let me get that out of the way. And then lastly, ooh, I think I mentioned, I'm pretty sure I mentioned this, that I was gonna, oh, I was ordering yarn for, uh, for the machine and it's 400 gram cones of super garn called Active. It's more of a rustic-ish. Like it's not, it's not, it's not harsh, but it's not like super soft. Like it's not like a Felici soft but it's more like, like this one is, um, this was like, I can't remember what it was. It's more like an opal yarn. It's, I believe it's a German, it's a German yarn, but you got a 400 gram skein for $26. So that's four skeins of yarn, essentially, already on a cone. <laughs> so, and it's, they make like the fun patterns. So I don't have a picture of the patterning, but they make those like faux fair isle kind of patterns. And so this is the Christmas one called Kringle. They had multiple Christmas colorways, but, and I ordered mine off of csmsupplies.com because of, I was only ordering a couple to sample and shipping was crazy. Shipping from Germany was a lot of money. So when I put two in my cart, they were $15 from the uh, Supergarn website. But then when I put the shipping in, it was 60 <laughs> to ship two. So after doing the math, or maybe it was like three. I think I had three in my cart. But after doing the math, it was about the same price for me to order two from CSM Supplies and have it shipped for $11. So they were like $26 per cone plus $11 shipping instead of $15 a cone for $60 shipping. So if I was to, if I really like this and I really like the yarn and they have tons of colors and patterns and whatever, if I really enjoy using this, I would then buy, you know, like f five to 10 or something and bulk order, maybe even find a friend that wanted some and then pay the shipping, which is still going to be expensive. But then it, each one you go ends up, you know, ticking it down less and less. So it'd be probably maybe like $20 a skein or a cone. So, um, but this one's called Iceland, I believe. Iceland. Yes. So this one's got mostly gray, but then it's got like some pops of green and blue. So I bought this mainly to try out for gym. So gym socks. And I wanted to just crank a sock without worrying about contrast, toe and heel. Now, I mean, it's still a striped yarn, so I still might get those weird spots. I'm hoping not, because I'd like to just be able to crank out a sock without worrying about the patterning too much. So we'll see, I'm gonna try it. And then the Christmas one, I was gonna make us matching socks. So that was fun. So I got that today. Uh, I haven't done anything else on the, so on the machine. I just came up here to 
potentially play around, but I don't know. I don't know what I'm in the mood for today. Um, I don't have anything else active. I Oh, I should work on my sweater, but I probably won't. <laughs> so I was watching more videos on how to use the rubber and how to avoid like holes in the sides of your heels. Let's see, do these ones have holes? Yes. Yes, they do. Um, that one, and of course I don't remember which heel was what. Actually, that one looks really good. That one does not have holes. Uh, actually, all these heels, look oh, that one's got a hole. So this, si this side does, but the other side doesn't. So you can see like a hole right there, kinda. Now it, will, it would snug up a little in the wash too. Which heel, and that was my deep heel. So what did I do differently on that one? I don't know, because this one's got, let's see, uh, not really. Yeah, this one looks pretty good. Like there's no real, nothing really going on there. So, and the other side looks good. So the other side looks good on that one. So yeah, just the one side has the hole. And is that, I don't know what side, I think that's the, I don't know, I don't, I don't know. Um, and the first heel I did didn't have holes, so maybe I just screwed up on there. And you see I dropped a stitch there and everything, so. I don't know, but I watched a video that had a specific technique to avoid holes. So, on your heels and toes. And they had some tips on the toes. Like, the toe is essentially the heel, because you can see. Yeah, it looks like a toe. And then you catch your kitchen right closed. But like you can have the, you have these little edges can potentially have dog ears pop out. And I think you get that sometimes if you hand Kitchener things too. So there was a technique, I watched a video and, but I don't remember it. So I'd have to watch it again before, before I do it. So, um, that's it. That's it. That's all I got for my update today. I'm going to, I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm either going to poke around my machine a little bit more today or... I'm, or I'm not, and I'm not going to do anything crafty. So either way, I'll pop in tomorrow with a uh, wrap up. And I did record a piano video for my teacher, so I'll put that in. And that's it. And that'll be the episode this week. So we will see you in the next clip. Hey guys, it's Friday and oh my god, it's 2.25. Emily's just getting out of school probably and it's gonna be home soon and I have not gotten anything done. I did run errands today, so I did get some things done. But I spent way too much time trying to find a pattern to work on this weekend. Just something easy in my list and you know what? I didn't find anything that, like everything I found that was like that I want to do, it's like, oh, uh, I either got a wine yarn for it, which I don't want to do really, or it's something like more complicated than it needs to be and... I'm gonna make knockers. I'm gonna work on my knockers again. I thought I was gonna be done with that for a while, but those are so easy and mindless. And I have a bunch of yarn that I got for it. So that's what I'm gonna do. So that was a total time suck. In other news, uh, I guess it's good I didn't completely uh, rip this out because I can show you. Um, I started working on my river and uh, I probably, okay, part of the mistake is I think that I used waste yarn, but I don't like to, you know, I don't want to necessarily run, like, nice yarn through the machine and then rip it out a bunch of times, but I do have lots of scraps from the other socks that I made and stuff, but I want to try to get the ribbing to work, which, I, the ribber worked, but it's, like, too, it's way too loose. Like, it almost looks like the mock rib, where it just looks like there's a dropped, dropped bar there, so that's, like, way, okay, and this is three by one ribbing, so... That's why there's big gaps there. But the, like, look at that rib stick. It basically looks like a drop stitch. So that's not right. Uh, and I tightened the river a couple times. But again, the waist yarn is obviously... I mean, it doesn't seem like it'd be that different that it would be that big of a thing. But I'm going to try using some of my Felici scraps. Uh, but I had started to wind this back on the cone and then I ran out of time. So you get to see that. Uh, but I'm probably not going to get to it today because I need to start, uh, getting things ready for dinner and all that stuff. Um, and I got to get this uploaded and I got to clean up my mess on the machine here. I have ribbing, ne ribbing needles everywhere and things everywhere. Uh, for the most part, I think I have a handle on how to use the river, how to load it, um, potentially how to start a sock with it. 
it is tricky and apparently it tends to drop stitches pretty easily and it's just it's uh it's a whole beast of its own but I like the socks with the rolled hem but I, th I like ribbing too so I, I just want to see how how it fits so I will play around with my scrap yarn or with my yeah with my scrap felici put it into the river and see what it does make just a whole rib too I don't know if I want one by one or two, two by two. And that's a question too. Like usually when I do my sock cuffs, it's two by two, I think. Oh no, let's see, I'm wearing a sock right now. What is it? Um, oh, it's falling. This one is one by one, I, I think. Boy, and it's, I mean, the pearl stitch looks pretty stretched out too. So I don't know, maybe that's somewhat normal. So, but I think this is a one by one, but this was, I, I don't know, this was a weird sock. I, now I'm all messed up here. Um, so I don't know, what do you do for your socks? One by one or two by two? Or both, like, which do you prefer? So I have socks with both. And knitting wise, I prefer doing two by two just because I think it's easier to knit. But like fit wise, I don't know, like for all my hats, it's one by one. So I don't know, is that a, which one's a snugger fit? one by one or a two by two. I would really like to make a red hat, like a red barley light, like really like dark red. I don't have any dark red yarn. So that would be an easy project to bring too, but I don't know, I'll have to look at my shelf. It would require me to wind yarn, which I just said I didn't want to do, but that's a super easy project to bring. And I really want it. I don't see any dark reds in fingering weight on my first glance so and i keep losing my hats i gotta figure out a better, better way to store my hats because i don't know where my brown beige one is uh, it took me forever to find this one this morning and i just keep losing them so i started to hang some of my accessories on this little rack i have here that i bought like months ago still need to do that but anyways i'm just rambling so that is all i have for the week i'm going to finish cleaning up this and this and then do my thing so i hope everyone has a good weekend and a good week and i will be back next friday with more crafty things so i hope you get to go craft all the things